Hey everyone, just wanna let you know we now have an affiliate relationship with the company that hosts our website. It's Bluehost. It has really affordable web hosting. If you're thinking about starting a WordPress site or a regular site, they have free templates to design the site, free WordPress installs. You can create multiple websites on your one account. You can have a ton of email addresses on your one account. And it all starts at $3.95 a month. So this is one of the servers that we use. It's called Bluehost. And if you go to gardenfork.tv slash Bluehost, you will get information about them. And also we get a little finder's fee. So that helps us keep the show going. All right. So gardenfork.tv slash Bluehost. Thanks. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Garden Fork Radio. You're here with Rick and Eric. Good morning, Eric. How are you, my friend? I'm good. It's raining here, but we need the rain. So ah, It's raining here, too. We got some nice big thunder bumpers uh, roaming the area. I uh, took the Labradors out to uh, the Atlantic Ocean the other day, mm-hmm. and I was, I was on the beach, and I almost called you because I was like, you know, we're kind of on the same water. You know, you could basically travel down this beach and go to Rick's house. You could, you could, you come on down, swim on down. <laughs> so I thought about that because I was like, <laughs> the waves that are reaching me, the, it might be a, a wave that's maybe a thousand miles wide and is reaching Rick as well. See? That's a deep yeah. thought. We're, we're all connected. We're all connected. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been posting uh, some photos of the pups on Instagram. If you guys are on Instagram, it is Garden Fork is the... Uh, is the Instagram account. It also posts to our Tumblr blog and to uh, our Facebook page as well. I didn't know you had a Tumblr. Yeah, I just started playing with it. It um, For the geek side of you people, it has some very good SEO properties, uh, things that you link to in a Tumblr blog score high in Google's Google search engine. So it's a little self-serving in that I post uh, interesting photos there and then link back to the article on our website. Ah, uh, okay. But there's SEO also, is a search engine opti- optimization. optimization. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah. And and actually bringing up the kind of geek world, um, I'm going to start writing posts about how I make Garden Fork. Uh, people have asked about how do you do a podcast? How do you make videos, Eric? What kind of equipment you use? And so we're going to start a series of DIY posts about that soon. Well, that'll be fun. Yeah, because um, I actually was uh, talking with a friend of mine, uh, my friend who I've been meeting with, John, who runs HelloBee.com, by the way. It's a nice parenting site, HelloBee.com. And he was listening to the Garden Fork Radio, and he says, you know, Eric, your end of the recording sounds kind of echoey. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I got to work on that. I don't hear it, but right now my ears are a little plugged up. Uh, Rick's been having a, a little bout of asthma again for some reason, but uh, anyway, um, I don't hear the echo right now. Yeah, I'm going to have to pay a little more attention to it. Any audio uh, geeks out there, if you know how to dial back n- the echo from a native recording, that would be cool to, and find out about that. Yeah. But I've been just kind of... Uh, kind of lit a fire under myself and I'm going to redo the garden fork site. It's been kind of, I've kind of not really ignored it, but I've just been kind of dealing with other stuff, trying to roll out the second YouTube channel, which is DIY garden fork, everybody. Right. I've subscribed to that. Yeah. We have 2000 subscribers already. So you've got DIY garden fork. And then what is the other one? It's called regular. It's regular. It's called on YouTube right now. It's called garden fork. I'm thinking of changing it to garden fork cooks. Okay. Uh, but I don't know. It's it's just kind of a work in progress right now. But I'm trying to tell everyone that's on the main Garden Fork channel, which is like 40,000 subscribers, hey, uh, go on over and check out the new one. Because all the DIY videos are going to be on the new YouTube channel. On iTunes, they're all going to be this. It's all going to be on the one Garden Fork channel for right now. Oh, okay. Uh, I haven't split that off because it's just... It's too much to do right now. Understood, yeah. It's basically, it's another custom RSS feed for you geeks out there. It's an iTunes compliant, uh, media rich RSS feed. Ah, uh, and of course then the dogs have their own channel. Yeah, I just post up whenever I shoot videos of the, just I, you know, I literally pull out the iPhone and turn the 
I hit the video record and they're like playing with their rope toy or something. And I put it up on a little YouTube channel for them. And there's, there's like a thousand people that like to watch him. So what the heck? But you know, nothing gives me joy sometimes like just watching dogs at play. Yeah. And they love it. They are yeah. maniacs. The, it's yeah, kind of quickly around the water. Your dogs around the water. You know, and I thought that they would have issues with the salt water because they've been in fresh water all their lives and they mm-hmm. just, Charlie Pop doesn't go deep into the ocean. Uh, Henry likes the surf, but I have to keep an eye on them so the undertow uh, doesn't grab them. But they they're, they're seem to be, they go up to about their belly or so. But I yeah. thought that they drink too much salt water, huh? Uh, but they haven't. So they've been good. They just, they oh. love this. The sand is really soft and they can dig in it and stuff. And Yeah. When we were stationed down in uh, Puerto Rico, Every morning, the um, the uh, SEAL team would run by, and Sydney would uh, kind of prance with the SEAL teams and run along beside them, and and uh, they they'd run out to the point, and then they'd dive into the water and they'd swim back, and and Sydney would swim out with them, and I'd have to swim out and grab her because she'd swim out to exhaustion and <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and actually uh, kind of get tired, and you know, little little Karen Terrier just couldn't quite make that. I think that maybe about a two mile swim for him, and. Uh, and so I'd had to swim out there and pull her back in because uh, Rick was not going to make a two mile swim with the seals. <laughs> so you and I were talking before I started recording and you brought up something called nuts and I did not know what it was. Nuts that uh, she who must be obeyed brought that home one day. Uh, nuts are nagging unfinished tasks and life is full of them. And they're the kind of things that drive you nuts, aren't they? Yeah, I have a lot of those here. They're and looking at they're on my desk right now here. Oh, really? So, what what kind of nuts do you have on top of uh, your desk right now? I have two fishing reels that I want to sell on eBay, and I took the pictures and everything. I just haven't posted them on eBay. <laughs> oh, saltwater or yeah, they're saltwater reels from my dad. Um, I don't know if they're worth anything, but it's part of a a garden fork project. I wrote a post about. Uh, you know, finding old stuff and whether it's worth putting on eBay or not. And so now I have to put it on eBay to do a follow-up article uh, about how to sell on eBay. So oh, okay. we sold a chandelier on eBay. <laughs> I wrote an article about it on the site. And um, You know, I always find eBay a bit perplexing how to actually work on eBay. And I've never have really gotten into it. You know, my big thing is just be honest and take a bunch of pictures and emphasize that what you're selling is in as-is condition. Right. Uh, you know, if it works, if it's a computer, yes, it boots up, it does this and this, but it, I just emphasize that it's used and there is no warranty. And um, I have not had a bad experience on eBay. Well, and actually, we just, uh, shameless plug here, but we built a retro... Uh, DIY vintage hanging lamp with using uh, suppliers on eBay. Oh, I remember that. We talked about it the last time uh, we had the uh, radio show. Yeah. Which I'm, is, I'm sorry yeah. to be absent for so long. That's all right. Which is, was a sponsored post. Got to be clear about that. Yeah, so, well, that's right. But I found that the kind of nagging undone stuff kind of starts to grind on you. So what I've been starting to do is just like, I've tried to be more scheduled in my day and I'm like, okay, I'm going to like this morning, I'm going to work on garden fork radio and then garden fork videos. And then at noon, I'm going to stop and I'm going to go work on a project, a house project. And then later I'm going to finish up some of these nagging unfinished tasks. And you know, one of the things that uh, we do here at the house now is do not bring home a project you're not going to finish. Yep. Um, I mean, don't bring home a, a project and, and make it a someday project, a someday project. We have a house full of them and no more. Uh, bring it home and don't bring another one home till you do finish that one. Yes, I have done that. It's, uh, I mean, I'm really right brain, so I'm not good at scheduling. And, um, you know, my goal here is to, uh, to have like a, and an in-office part-time assistant that would just say, all right, let's make the schedule for the week here, you know? Right. <laughs> and just make me follow it. Because if it's written out and you, I, if you put it up on the wall, you're much more likely to follow it. I was trying to think of a virtual schedule, you know, that could go along my different devices, you know, right. could, it could be in the iPad, the phone and the, and the desktop computer. Do you know of anything like that? Uh, yeah. Someone's, someone's talking at the, Radio sure, right someone's now. yelling at the computer. Uh, you know, I use, I actually use Siri and just use reminders, you know, uh-huh. uh, remind me at such and such a time to do such and such. 
and that that helps me a lot because it it pops up wherever I am. Cool. And uh, and I make notes to myself all the time um, while I'm walking or reading or or um, while I'm, uh, I haven't been in the bees lately, uh, but uh, when I'm under the veil, uh, I use Siri a lot uh, because you can just reach up, uh, you have your uh, headsets in, and uh, click the mic and uh, you know say make a note such and such, and uh, you you record it as you're doing it, and then you uh, you have that uh, ready, and uh, now. I actually have um, locations recorded in Siri so that when I say, uh, when I go to the blue store, remind me to pick up such and such, and it will remind me. So it, it actually works out. I have to explore that more. So, it, you know, the, the whole point is to uh, relieve your mind of having to remember all that stuff so that, um, you know, you don't have to recall it and make two or three trips, which is what I usually do. Yeah. <laughs> I've also been doing a lot of free cycling. Um, the block we live on in Brooklyn has its own little uh, Google email list, you know, a group email list. Right. And uh, I got rid of some bricks from the backyard, and I'm trying to get rid of some, like, pressure-treated 4 by 4s that we pulled out of the ground. They're still in good shape, so I, I always just take a picture and stick it up there. And you can do the same thing with Craigslist. Uh, they have a free section uh, or if, if you just want to put it in a particular section, put free. The key thing is, if you're giving it away for free, you're going to get a bunch of people that email you and go, oh, I'll be right over. Would you hold it for me? Don't hold it for anyone. It's first come, first serve. And I put my address, and I don't put, on Craigslist, I don't put a reply email address. I just, um, there's a button where you can click where, you know, do not post. Right. Uh, and they anonymize your email address there. Um, but I just go, look, it, it's on this street. It's here right now. Whoever comes and gets it. Because I've learned I've been trying to be a good, oh, I'll hold it for the guy. He said he'd be here in an hour. And they don't show up. They never come. Yeah. So what they're uh, doing, you know, they're just they're just collecting what they can to sell it or whatever. And I'm like, whoever comes, comes. That's right. Uh, now, you know, there is a uh, there are free cycle sites as well. Yes. yes. Um, I used to be a member of the Brooklyn one, but it was it was just too much to 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 keep track of <laughs> because yeah. it is Brooklyn, you know, it's 7 million people or 4 million people or whatever. There is a, um, a new site that's coming up and um, it's called next door and we've been using it in my neighborhood and it's neighborhood specific. And oh, uh, I think people, I heard about this on new tech city. Maybe uh, people sign up. Uh, the city is involved uh, to a small extent, you know, as far as alerts and, and keeping people involved. Uh, and so you can uh, advertise um, uh, things for sale. Uh, there have been a few, you know, break-in kind of related items. Um, and, and, but it, it kind of ties the neighborhood together in a way. But it's called Next Door. It's an app. Uh, I'm sure it's. I, I'm sure it is a website as well. I'm just familiar with the app side of it on the uh, on the uh, on the iPad for me. But uh, uh, it, it's it's useful for kind of getting those alerts. And uh, you know, there've been. Well, I mean, you know, it's 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 newsy stuff. Yep. Um, you know, lost dogs and uh, you know, I, I just found a black and white cat. You know, that kind of stuff. Um, I, I oh oh hold telephone. on telephone. You know, I get these phone calls every morning from, uh, I can tell by looking at the foot, it has the caller ID thing, but they're calling about my electrical service and they want to switch me over to uh, another provider. And um, there's no way to block the number because I I, I use Vonage. I use the IP phone, a Vonage system, and you can't block phone numbers on Vonage. And it drives me crazy because they call four times a day. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, next door is a, uh, it's, you should explore it because it's, it's kind of expandable. You know, you can make it for just your little neighborhood, uh, in my area, uh, we call it great neck farms. Um, just this little, uh, uh, area, but it can be larger for the city of Virginia beach or for, um, a, a section of the city as well. And so it kind of gives you, uh, makes you feel a little more connected to the city and it's called next door. Next door. Cool. Um, we have a bit of viewer mail. Do we? Yeah. Well, let me get it up here. Let's see. Uh, one is from Joe, who is a Packer fan like me. So we had a nice email exchange. Okay. 
and he watched our pizza oven. Fun video on the portable brick pizza oven. I went and bought Silverstein's book. I'm about to build the oven this week. Uh, but he has an issue with the uh, design specs. Uh, I wrote that it was 24 inch pieces of angle iron and he said it should be 28 inches. Um, so I'm going to go double check that actually in the book, it says 24 inches and he said it should, Joe said it should be 28. So I'm going to, I guess I should just build my oven again <laughs> and measure that. Yeah. I've, been, I've been wanting to do that. So if you've had an experience with the pizza oven, let me know, but it was really nice to talk to Joe about that. There's kind of this aha moment of people when they come across the portable brick pizza oven video, and then they send me pictures of the, of the ovens they've made or the pizzas they've made. And it's just, it's just very cool that people do that. You know, it, it, and it ain't rocket science. I mean, you know, it's just kind of hanging out there across the front. Yeah. And so, you know, 24, 28, um, it's going to pretty much work regardless. Yeah. Um, what I'm working on now is a uh, Weber grill pizza oven hack. It's, oh, really? It's not, it's, it's, um, it's based on a design, a commercial design that's out there. Um, but I thought, well, let's try and hack this thing. Cause I actually have some leftover sheet metal from, uh, running some vents, fresh air vent for the new boiler in Brooklyn. And I was like, I was looking at it. I was looking at it in the basement saying, should I just throw out that sheet metal? Not throw it out, but the, the metal recyclers in my neighborhood will pick it up in three seconds. But I was like, should I put this out for the scrap metal guy or should I use it for something? And I was like, Oh, maybe I could make that, that Weber grill pizza oven thing. Well, I'm, you're going to have to explain because I've been doing pizza on my Weber grill forever. Well, what this does, it raises the lid of the P of the, of the Weber and puts a sheet metal curtain around it. So essentially you're making it, uh, you're, you're putting a metal wall on top of your grill and then the, the domed top sits on this metal wall and you cut a slot in the metal wall and on the pizza, on the grill grate is a circular pizza stone and then propped up on top of that by various ways is another pizza stone and you start with charcoal um, first you just start with an empty Weber with charcoal, then you throw in oak, like some oak logs, then you assemble this, uh, Weber grill pizza oven thing, and then you make pizzas. There's also a that's guy that makes crazy. something called that, the, that's kind of crazy, isn't it? I'll send you a link. Uh, it, it's, um, I mean, what I do is I have a Weber that is a charcoal. I'm, I'm a charcoal fan. I put the, uh, I divide the uh, charcoal half on one side, half on the other, put the grill on top, throw the pizza on top, and I cook it. What else do you need to do? I mean, you put the lid on, and it holds the heat in. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm just <laughs> trying to uh, – that's that's a little nuts. I'm, I mean, I, I need to see this. You need to send me a, a video or something. I'll send you from it. There's also a guy um, – I mean, I'm, unless you're doing production um, – I, you know, I, I, I guess I should first try just your method and then move on from there. But the, uh, I mean, it's, I just like building stuff as you know. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's a guy in San Francisco who has what he calls the Frankenweber and he has created a, uh, very lightweight cement, uh, dome for a Weber grill. So it looks almost like a bread oven and he mixes a lot of perlite in the cement so it's not as heavy it's kind of like very lightweight refractory cement right um well, that's and interesting i i don't know he's tried to get that off the ground as a commercial product i'm not sure so how would that be different from say those uh egg-shaped ceramic things it's just cheaper i mean the the big green egg is it's big it's it's hard to move around um yeah i've never used a big green egg two of my friends have them and they to me they just um I don't know. I, I don't. I don't barbecue that much. So, uh, yeah. but that might change if we had a barbecue sponsor. <laughs> ah, well, where's Delaney when we need him? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the second uh, email here is from Dale. Hey, Eric, I would be interested in seeing a video on how to convert an old non-grounded electrical wall outlet, which is the kind with just two prongs into a grounded outlet, which is the kind with three prongs, just in case you think that might also be interesting to others. Yeah. My sister just uh, bought a mid-century uh, split level 
Uh, they're also called uh, atomic age houses. They're called atomic ranches. That's what they're called. Really? And three quarters of the house just has dual dual prong outlets, not grounded outlets. And then some of the house was retrofitted and they ran uh, an upgraded wire and put grounded outlets in. Ooh, wow. Um, yeah, you can do it. It is, it might, you know, whenever I put up an electrical video, I get a lot of negative comments because there's, um, there's just people that are like, Hey, you, you're an amateur. You shouldn't be doing this. You don't know what you're doing. There's, there's, uh, you've made several mistakes here. So I've kind of shied away actually from making a lot of electrical videos. Well, and, and generally when you run into a, a two wire installation like that, you're also dealing with really old wire yep. and really old installation. And it, I'm sorry, I had to cough there. It, um, it, it really is not a bad idea just to go ahead and restring the whole thing. Yeah. And that, uh, is best done. I think by a professional, it will cost money, but then your house won't burn down. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I had a, uh, a house in San Antonio that, uh, um, had aluminum wiring and Ooh. that, that was such an enormous pain because it had aluminum wiring and, um, uh, and, uh, uh, copper pigtails and they were constantly expanding and contracting at different rates when yeah. they heated up and they were constantly, uh, heating, uh, because they, they would, uh, expand, break apart just enough to, uh, heat and um, and and uh, break the circuit, and that's good if it broke the circuit. But if it heated up too much, it actually started a fire. Mm -hmm. And uh, I ended up having to uh, pull the entire uh, uh, wiring set out of that house and rewire it. And that was a a major pain in the backside and, uh, <laughs> and really expensive. So there you go, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good idea. And I, I've actually experienced this personally because my sister's like, Hey, what do we do about this? And I'm like, we got to run new wire. Yeah. Um, but well, it, there are just so many advantages to running new wire, but the, the biggest one is just safety and, and yeah. capacity. Uh, most of the time when you run into a two wire system, it just does not have the load carrying capacity that, uh, a, a modern, um, um, a three wire, uh, heavy duty system is going to have. Yeah, when you plug in that microwave and the lights dim, that's a red flag. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> well, there you go. Cool. Another 20 minutes with Rick and Eric. Ah, well, and like I say, I'm sorry I've been away so long. Well, it's good to have you back, sir. Okay. Uh, just uh, had a, a lot of little life things going on here. Those nuts things. Hey, Those everyone, things. real quick. And, but nothing will, nothing will relieve your, your uh, spirit like taking care of nuts. And I think that's the important thing. Uh, take care of those nagging unfinished tasks. Just set them aside and do them set them aside a little time and you will feel so much better because nothing, uh, they just weigh you down, weigh you down. Yeah. And don't overcommit to people. Yeah. No is a perfectly good word, <laughs> but don't say no to garden fork. So would you go to iTunes and write a review on the garden fork radio page and the Garden Fork video page that helps in our search rankings. Uh, when people go to iTunes and they type in, oh, I want to listen to a cooking podcast or watch a video, uh, we're more likely to show up if you leave uh, reviews on the iTunes pages. And I'll link to those in the show notes here as well. You know, um, you know, you said just say no. And it reminded me, I think it was Monica. Uh, we haven't heard from her in a while. But uh, she gave me my best uh, no quote of a while uh, that I've heard in a while. Uh, uh, when she tells people no, she says, it's, uh, it's not my circus and those are not my monkeys. <laughs> Supposedly, it's an old Polish proverb. Not my circus, not my monkeys. All right. Okay. Well, listen, I got to get on down the road. It's, um, it's a stormy, rainy, uh, crappy day out here, but I got lots of work to do. Yeah, I gotta see about my uh, one of my gutters is leaking. So, <laughs> oh, are you at the house? I mean, you in Brooklyn? Or are you in? Uh... I'm in Brooklyn, but my neighbor's uh, gutter and our gutter um, overlap, and there's an issue there. So, <laughs> mm. gotta be careful. Okay, well, 
Talk to you later, my friend. So there you go. Just a quick reminder, if you're interested in building your own website, it is gardenfork.tv slash bluehost. All right, make it a great day. Garden Fork's theme music is used under license from uniquetracks.com. Thank you.